but it's fake. Yeah, well, it makes me feel better. Princess Carolyn was born on June 6, 1974 in Eden, North Carolina. She was the youngest in a litter of 12 siblings and was also the runt of the litter. PC's family was very low income and her mother, Cutie Cutie Cupcake, was a full-time live-in maid for a wealthy family, the Wallaces. Her entire family lived in a small apartment above the Wallaces' garage. PC's favorite movie was The Amelia Earhart Story, which also happened to be the only videotape her family owned. This was a dramatic and exaggerated retelling of Amelia Earhart's journey as a pilot. Princess Carolyn used this film as an escape and watched it so much that the tape actually wore out. Princess Carolyn's mother was an alcoholic, which got worse as she got older, and often led to PC being forced to do her mother's maid work for her. In 1992, at age 18, Princess Carolyn's siblings had all moved out, leaving her to live alone with her mother. Around this time, PC became friends with the Wallace's teenage son, Cooper Thomas Rogers Wallace III. PC encouraged him to try out for the football team, and he became the first string quarterback. This led to a romantic connection, and the two of them slept together. The same night of this hookup, Princess Carolyn argued with her mother about going to college in California. Cutie chastised PC for wanting to leave and tried to scare her about their inability to pay for college. She guilt trips PC in an incredibly unhealthy way. All the way on the other side of the country from your mother? You're gonna abandon me? Not long after this, Princess Carolyn discovers that she's pregnant with Cooper's child, leading her to believe her life is over. However, Cutie sees this as a huge opportunity that the Wallace family will now be forced to support her for the rest of her life. Cutie then gives Princess Carolyn a necklace and tells her that it's an old family heirloom passed down from the old country. When you wear this, I I want you to remember that you've come from a long line of women who've taken our licks, but we always land on our feet. She then tells PC not to blow it because this is their shot. Princess Carolyn meets with Cooper and Mr. Wallace that night and they agree that the two will get married. He tells her that they'll be financially supported for the rest of her life with the caveat that her entire life will be meticulously planned out. PC agrees. Unfortunately, after this, Princess Carolyn has her first miscarriage, and Cutie blames it entirely on Princess Carolyn. Miscarriages don't just happen. This was our ticket. That baby would have <laughs> changed everything for us. PC sobs and apologizes to her mother, who then tells her that she's free now, and reveals that an acceptance letter to UCLA came in the mail. Shortly after this, Princess Carolyn heads off to Los Angeles. As she waits to board the plane, her mother begs her to stay with her just one more year. PC refuses and heads off to her new life. In 1993, Princess Carolyn begins working as an intern for talent agent Marv's Barbori to help pay for college. Through working with Marv, PC meets Bojack Horseman. The first time Princess Carolyn met Bojack, she went to his house to drop off scripts, only to discover he was passed out on his lawn covered in tapioca pudding. PC hoses down Bojack, drags him inside, and covers him with a blanket. The second time PC meets Bojack was after a taping of Horseman and around. She went backstage to say hi, but Bojack wrote her off and told her to leave him alone. The third time she met Bojack was at her office when Bojack came in to meet with Marv. On Halloween 1993, Princess Carolyn attends Bojack's first annual Halloween party. She dresses as Amelia Earhart, but was put on door duty to hand out Emmy screeners to trick-or-treaters. Eventually, PC was promoted from intern to Marv's assistant. In 2003, Princess Carolyn attended a poker match at Wilder Valderrama's house with a variety of other Hollywood folks, including Mr. Peanut Butter. PC notices that PB has a tell when he's bluffing. In 2004, Princess Carolyn attended Bojack's annual Halloween party, once again dressed as Amelia Earhart. While there, she answers the door for some trick-or-treaters, who she says are too old to be trick-or-treating, and sends them away. She also helps Bojack make a last-minute costume using toilet paper to turn him into a mummy. In 2007, Princess Carolyn and Bojack Horseman sleep together for the first time. She tells him that she doesn't want to make a thing of it, and he agrees. PC then starts working to get Bojack some work to prove that she has agent potential. She convinces him to meet with a TV writer named Cuddly Whiskers to talk about a show he wrote. The meeting goes really well, but Bojack is still worried about doing the project. PC begs him to give a reason. Bojack says that the show sounds incredible, and he's worried that he isn't. PC tells him he's got it all wrong. You're bright, and you're funny, and you're handsome, and you're talented. But if you can't see that, then you're the biggest, dumbest piece of shit in the world. Bojack agrees to do the show and thanks Princess Carolyn for it. After a table read for the show goes exceptionally well, Bojack and Cuddly Whiskers panic and decide to rewrite the script, despite Princess Carolyn's objections. Bojack berates PC for giving her two cents. Is that how you think of me? As your agent's assistant? Well, what do you think you are? I, I don't know, I guess- Well, here's some free advice. You should know. After this, Princess Carolyn immediately goes to Marv and asks to be an agent. Marv quits on the spot and gives her all of his clients, including Bojack Horseman. Bojack and Cuddly Whiskers' show morphs into something called the Bojack Horseman Show, and Princess Carolyn goes to Bojack's premiere party at his house. At this party, PC rejects Bojack's advances, telling him that she wants to have a family by the time she's 40 years old. I don't want to spend the next seven years of my life falling in and out of love with you. I've wasted too much time waiting for things to happen. 
and I'm not going to wait anymore. Unfortunately, the premiere for the BoJack Horseman show is a miserable failure, sending BoJack spiraling. He calls Princess Carolyn to come comfort him, and due to her upbringing being conditioned to cover for and emotionally support her mother for her entire life, she obliges. The two sleep together again. Don't you break my heart, BoJack Horseman. In 2009, Princess Carolyn once again attends BoJack's annual Halloween party, but now they're dating. She answers the door for a teenage Todd Chavez, who questions why she's on door duty at her boyfriend's party. PC ponders this before leaving the party to rethink her life. Princess Carolyn maintains an on-again, off-again romantic relationship with Bojack through 2014. Sometime during this period, her father died, and Bojack attended the funeral with her. Over this time, PC continued to excel as a talent agent. In 2014, Princess Carolyn formally breaks things off with Bojack romantically, but not professionally. Despite this, they continue to sleep together for a period of time afterwards. After learning that pop star and actress Sarah Lynn fired her agent, PC springs into action with a daring plan. She clumsily attempts to woo Sarah Lynn while subtly dropping the name of her rival, Vanessa Gecko, who also happens to be Sarah Lynn's ex-boyfriend, Andrew Garfield's agents. As soon as Sarah Lynn decides to hire Vanessa Gecko, PC has the info leaked and hoped that it would lead to Andrew Garfield firing his agent for signing his ex, in which case she would attempt to sign Garfield herself. Not long after this, Todd Chavez starts to write a rock opera, and when it's looking like it's going to be a success, PC swoops in and signs Todd as a client. Shortly after this, when Bojack goes out of town for his book, Todd turns Bojack's house into a museum called Boreana's House, where people get to see where David Boreanaz lives, despite not being his actual house. Princess Carolyn quickly jumps in on the scheme and helps increase revenue. Unfortunately, Todd can't keep up with the cash flow, and the entire operation is shut down. PC abandons ship, and Todd is sent to jail. Shortly after this, Bojack is sent spiraling because Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane Wynn got engaged. Princess Carolyn gives him her get your shit together speech, and then gets him a new gig as the face of Guten Bourbon. Unfortunately, the same day, PC's agency Vigor merges with another agency, FME, forcing her to share an office with her rival, Vanessa Gecko. She then learns that Bojack has abandoned his gig for Guten Bourbon, but her other client, Todd Chavez, immediately books the role in his place. Bojack shows up at PC's office and attempts to rekindle their romantic relationship. Princess Carolyn tries to turn him down, knowing it's just a rebound from his Diane drama. She tells him she can't be his girlfriend and his agent. This leads to Bojack firing PC and hiring Vanessa Gecko so that he can date PC. While giving a get your shit together speech to Todd, PC misses the meeting for the Ava Braun film project she put together for her client, Kate Blanchett. Exasperated by the stress of the day, PC agrees to go out with Bojack and has a wonderful time. For the moment, she's very happy. Unfortunately, they both get phone calls at the same time. PC learns that Vanessa Gecko has signed Kate Blanchett away from her, while Bojack is invited to go see Herb Kazaz in Malibu. Bojack breaks things off with PC and leaves her alone at the restaurant. Of course, of course. That's what you get when you fall for a horse. This is when Princess Carolyn kicks it into gear. She gives herself a get your shit together speech and gets to work. Princess Carolyn quickly throws together a film adaptation of a book called Suffragette City, attaching Cameron Crowe to direct. She knows this is Cate Blanchett's favorite book and is able to lure her away from the Ava Braun project. PC re-signs Cate Blanchett. Then, because the Ava Braun project fell apart, PC is able to organize a new rom-com based on the story of the D from the Hollywood Stein being stolen by Mr. Peanut Butter for director Quentin Tranchelino. She also books Bojack a role on the project. PC took her licks, but she always lands on her feet. She then calls Bojack to tell him the good news, but he tells her he doesn't care about that and that nothing matters. Princess Carolyn hangs up, looks out her window over the Santa Monica shoreline. The clock strikes midnight and her phone notification goes off. Happy birthday, Princess Carolyn. You are 40. Not long after this, Princess Carolyn is tricked by Bojack into coming to the bar to help him sabotage Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter's wedding, which she takes major exception to. But while there, she meets Vincent Adultman, a man who specializes in business transactions at the business factory. The two hit it off and start dating. PC later thanks Bojack for inviting her to the bar where she met him. She even says she's in love with him. A couple of months after Diane and PB's wedding, the film Mr. Peanut Butter's Hollywood Heist that was put together by Princess Carolyn starts production, with Bojack playing the part of Mr. Peanut Butter. The project eventually morphs into a bi-monthly curated basket of snacks. Around this time, Bojack also fires Diane from writing his book after her first draft is drastically different than what he expected. Princess Carolyn is furious that Bojack is rewriting the book himself, given that Diane's book was actually good. Bojack ultimately releases Diane's book to major critical acclaim, and in 2015, he even wins a Golden Globe for the book. With his newfound star power, Princess Carolyn starts finding Bojack work. They turn down the villain in the next Bond film, and Princess Carolyn suggests Bojack do the next Coen Brothers movie, but Bojack wants to do Secretariat. PC is also a little worried about her relationship with Vincent at this point. The two go out to dinner and have a serious talk about their relationship. I thought I wanted to date a real adult, but I'm actually young at heart. I need to feel the grass between my toes. I'm baby stuff. No Princess Carolyn breaks up with Vincent at dinner. 
Not long after this at PB Levin's launch party for smoothies, Vincent makes a grand gesture professing his love for PC. I had an attitude problem, but then I took a time out and I thought about what I did. The two make up and plan a trip together. About a month later, Princess Carolyn has a new terrible assistant and is dealing with Bojack stumbles through his first days on Secretariat. She's also talking more with her friend and co-worker Rutabaga Rabidowicz, but after sharing with him some inside info about a project she's putting together for one of her clients, he uses that info to get his own client to screen test for the same project. Shortly after this, Princess Carolyn and Vincent visit Todd's new theme park, Disneyland. Vincent throws a bit of a tantrum, which PC claims is because of his new adult braces, but he complains that she's embarrassing him. Later, Princess Carolyn attends the funeral of Herb Kazaz, the creator of Horse and Around and Bojack's former best friend. While there, PC gets caught up in the lie that she actually knew Herb very well, which isn't true, and was forced to improvise stories of her friendship with Herb for the entire wake. Because of this forged connection, Henry Winkler decides that PC should have Herb's ashes. On March 19th, 2015, Princess Carolyn attends Diane Wynn's surprise 35th birthday party. After Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter get in a huge fight about whether or not Tony Curtis is dead, the party ends prematurely. PC offers to take Todd home. On the way, they see a boy crossing the street who looks exactly like Vincent. Princess Carolyn assumes that this is Vincent's son. After she gets home, the boy shows up at her door and says his name is Kevin. He explains that he's Vincent's son. Vincent shows up eventually too, though we never really see them at the same time for some reason. Strange. After much discussion, Princess Carolyn breaks up with Vincent. PC soon attends a wedding for one of her nieces. Later, Hollywood agent Ronnie Benito is found dead, leading to a free-for-all for agents to sign as clients. Princess Carolyn was late for work that day, and she's only able to sign one of them, Mr. Peanut Butter. Fortunately for PC, Rutabaga has a tip that Ronnie had a super hush-hush client that nobody knew about, J.D. Salinger, author of Catcher in the Rye, and others. PC tracks down J.D. Salinger, signs him, and helps him pitch a new project to Wanda at MBN, a game show called J.D. Salinger Presents Hollywood Stars and Celebrities. What do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. Princess Carolyn realizes that the best person for the hosting job is none other than Mr. Peanut Butter, and she lands big deals for both of her new clients at the same time. Despite this, PC receives no recognition for her success from her boss at Vigor. To cheer her up, Ruta Baker gives her his famous movie star speech. He then tells her that he and his wife are getting a divorce. After this, Princess Carolyn goes on a press tour with Bojack and Diane to promote the paperback release of One Trick Pony. While fielding questions, Diane drudges up old allegations against Hollywood star Hank Hippopopoulos, causing a media frenzy. PC tries to help Diane navigate this by setting up a meeting at Manatee Fair. During the premiere episode of Hollywood Stars and Celebrities, What Do They Know? Do They Know Things? Let's find out. Bojack looks a bit like an asshole and an idiot. To help combat this, PC tells Bojack about Mr. Peanut Butter's bluff tell that she learned playing poker with him in 2003. Shortly after this premiere, Rutabaga pulls PC into a janitor's closet and tells her that he wants to leave Vigor and start an agency with her. Princess Carolyn isn't sure, as she's worked at Vigor for her entire career. She's then roped into helping Bojack and Secretariat director Kelsey Jannings break into the Nixon Library to steal a shot for the film. PC is a part of the team that creates a distraction at the art gallery near the Nixon Library, and while there, she has a vision of herself living in one of the paintings at the gallery. It's a fantasy of a calm, serene life, and she's immediately bored by it. She leaves, and as soon as she gets back to her office, she pulls Rutabaga into the elevator, kisses him, and accepts his offer. Shortly after this, Rutabaga purchases the building for their new agency with two months of of prep before they move in, but he also tells PC that the property and company is under her name while he deals with his divorce. PC asks Bojack and Mr. Peanut Butter if they'll follow her to her new agency, and they both agree. Shortly after this, Bojack doesn't show up on the set of Secretariat, and PC calls him to try and wrangle him in, only to discover that he's in New Mexico and won't be coming home anytime soon. Two months later, the new agency is ready to launch, Bojack is returned to LA, and PC informs him that as he requested, she gave Bojack's horse and around residuals to build a new orphanage. They go to the opening, which is uncomfortable. As Princess Carolyn and Rutabaga are preparing to move into their agency, PC realizes that Rutabaga is still working things out with his wife. Wife, despite the fact that they've been sleeping together. Rutabaga insists that he will be divorced. Princess Carolyn then reaches out to Diane, who has been secretly crashing on Bojack's deck for months, and offers her a job as a social media liaison for the new agency. Diane asks her why she's offering to help, and PC replies by describing the exact tendency we saw instilled in her by her mother. My life is a mess right now and I compulsively take care of other people when I don't know how to take care of myself. Princess Carolyn and Rutabaga then make a noisy and dramatic exit when they quit Vigor, and as they get in the elevator, Rutabaga tries to kiss PC. Princess Carolyn rejects him, and Rutabaga responds with some incredibly rude comments about how PC is in her 40s, will never do better than him, and should expect to be alone if she holds out for better. She responds that she isn't afraid to be alone and delivers the final blow. And you might want to find someplace else to work because 
you're not coming with me. With the company and property all in her name, she has no obligation to hire Rutabaga and leaves him to run her new company by herself. Soon, PC's agency Vim is up and running with help from her new assistant, Judah Man Now Dog. However, Princess Carolyn really starts to struggle with her new role running an agency as she's used to doing all of the hands-on work herself. Her client, J.D. Salinger, decides to end their run of Hollywood stars and celebrities. What do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. And then Salinger proceeds to fire PC for unprofessional behavior. Through the stress, Judah suggests that he take on more responsibility at the company, as well as prioritize finding great gigs for their existing clients instead of spreading themselves thin finding new clients. With this new directive, PC tells Mr. Peanut Butter to start looking for new work and ideas, and he starts up PB Living again. Not long after this, Mr. Peanut Butter and Todd both get sprayed by his skunk neighbor, and Princess Carolyn comes over to help eliminate the smell, which introduces all types of issues. Eventually, they burn their clothes, setting fire to Mr. Peanut Butter's lawn, and PC suggests that they insist this was on purpose to install drought-resistant landscaping. Later in the year, Secretariat finally hits theaters and is a huge success. Princess Carolyn calls Bojack to tell him that he's now a bona fide movie star. That same night, Princess Carolyn actually has a free evening and jokingly asks Judah to get her three dates since she so rarely has time off. Judah takes her seriously and books three separate dates for her that night. PC's first date is incredibly boring and talks about the glass industry nonstop. The second is an albino rhino gyno that basically laughs in PC's face when she suggests she'd like to still have kids. So, not great dates. The third is a mouse named Ralph Stilton, and the pair laugh at the irony of a cat and mouse being set up on a blind date. But despite this, the two have an amazing time together. At the end of the night, Ralph asks if he can see her again, and she laments that she has no idea when her next free evening will be. They agree that she'll call him if she ever frees up. Not long after this, Diane, who's getting an abortion, accidentally tweets, I'm getting an abortion from pop star Sixtina Aquafina's Twitter account, causing all kinds of drama at Vim. But when the reaction is actually positive, they lean into the lie with Princess Carolyn's help. This leads to a new hit single about abortion, as well as PC producing a fake live broadcast of Sixtina's abortion that turns out to be surprisingly tasteful and informative. PC sits with Diane after her abortion, and Diane tries to justify her experience to PC, somebody who wants to be a mother, but Princess Carolyn cuts her off. Diane, you don't need to explain anything to anyone. PC then gets a call from Sixtina, who is now actually pregnant and wants to keep the baby. PC and Diane brainstorm the best way to navigate this new development. During the four-year consideration season in Hollywood, PC helped Bojack and the Secretariat team decide what FYC ads they want to use for his awards campaign. They opt for a mirror ad that says, You are Secretariat, which causes major problems in billboard form. With Bojack's new star power, PC powers ahead to try and get him a huge franchise role in David Pincher's Flight of the Pegasus trilogy. Simultaneously, Rutabaga and Vanessa Gecko are working to get their client Chuff Hollister the same role. They send Kelsey Jannings to try and book Bojack on her new film and help her secure funding, which would interfere with the Flight of the Pegasus schedule. Bojack actually really wants to do Kelsey's film, and PC now has to navigate Bojack's wishes and her own agency's success. Kelsey's film option expires in the new year 2016, so on New Year's Eve 2015, PC tries her best to get Bojack both Kelsey's film and Flight of the Pegasus, but unfortunately, because of her overzealousness, both fall through, leaving Kelsey furious at Bojack and Bojack rolless. Judah immediately recognizes that they'll need to cut costs and PC yells at him. She then apologizes, sends him home, and watches the New Year's fireworks as she sits in her own failure. Shortly after this in 2016, PC goes to meet Bojack at Elefante and tries her best to damage control the situation, but Bojack is set on firing her. While doing this, he accidentally fires the head chef at Alifante, Sandro, instead, who leaves with the vast majority of the staff, all while a food critic is waiting for their food. Princess Carolyn and Bojack argue for a while, unloading a lot of pent-up feelings and resentment from years of working together and dating. They get in a physical fight at the restaurant. Eventually, they end up talking in the meat locker, and PC starts to tell Bojack the things she does like about him, though he tries to write them all off. She tells him she liked being with him and doesn't regret the time they were together. The last staff member remaining at the restaurant then tells PC and Bojack that they need a mushroom risotto for the food critic. PC says she knows how to make it, but instead of putting out another Bojack fire, she leaves. As she drives away, she can't help herself from turning around to go help Bojack one more time. She makes the mushroom risotto and they serve it to the food critic. Later, Bojack and PC talk and reminisce about their time together and about the first few times they met. PC begs Bojack not to fire her and give her one last chance. He refuses and he fires her anyways. What do you think? No. With these major losses, PC is forced to close Vim. She fires Diane and Judah suggests that PC embrace her new opportunities in life. Princess Carolyn immediately calls Ralph and the two start dating. 
Sometime during January or February 2016, Bojack shows up at PC's apartment and yells that he's sorry to her from the front yard. PC appears at the balcony with Ralph and then goes inside without talking to Bojack. PC and Ralph take a trip to Egypt together, and not long after this, they have dinner with Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane. PC is having a really hard time turning her agent brain off and starts booking appointments for Diane, suggesting she meet with Ralph's sister Stefani about working for her new news outlet, Girl Cruise. This is when PC realizes that she shouldn't be an agent, she should be a manager. She reopens Vim and rehires Judah, now a management company. Judah also informs PC that a teenage girl is trying to contact Bojack, but PC tells him that she doesn't work for Bojack anymore. In October 2016, Princess Carolyn is now having some major success running Vim as a management company. She's also supporting Mr. Peanut Butter's run for the governorship of California. She also learns that she's pregnant, which she keeps to herself. Ralph asks PC if she wants to move in with him, but she tells him it isn't a good time. In early 2017, at the gubernatorial ski race down Devil's Mountain, PC tells Ralph that she was pregnant, but since had a miscarriage. Ralph tells her that he thinks they should try to get pregnant on purpose. I'm saying maybe we should get you pregnant on purpose. Really? Later in 2017, PC asks Todd to help her with her client Courtney Portnoy's image by going on a date with her, hopefully making her appear more relatable. Todd reluctantly agrees, but messes up a couple of times. PC then tells Todd he needs to try again, which leads to Courtney proclaiming to the paparazzi that she and Todd are engaged. Shortly after this, PC and Ralph are fully pursuing pregnancy, but PC's gyno tells her she's running out of eggs. He gives them a series of helpful tools to try and get pregnant, including a watch with the voice of Harvey Firestein that informs her when she's ovulating. Let's put a baby in you. They get a notification while eating lunch, and they quickly try to rush home to have sex, but are pulled over and arrested by Officer Meow Meow Fuzzy Face. Without any other option, PC and Ralph have sex in the back of the cop car. Later this year, a mass shooting takes place at a mall, which puts Courtney Portnoy's film Mistaken in jeopardy. Princess Carolyn works with the studio to try and rework the film or do damage control. She hires Diane to write a puff piece about Mistaken, but after Courtney Portnoy stops the pair of them from being mugged with her gun, Diane embraces firearms and writes an article about that. PC uses this to help reframe Mistaken as pro-woman, but after a woman commits a mass shooting, California outlaws guns entirely, putting an end to Mistaken. I can't believe this country hates women more than it loves guns. No? Soon, PC is forced to team back up with Rutabaga, who is working as Courtney Portnoy's new agent, and the pair plan a spur-of-the-moment fake wedding for Courtney and Todd. This plan is derailed when Meryl Streep announces she's retiring from acting and having a retirement party the same day as the big Hollywood fake wedding. PC and Rutabaga decide to pitch Meryl a movie she can't say no to. Are you suggesting some sort of nutty Professor 2 the Clumps type situation where Meryl Streep plays every role? They end up trapping Meryl in a box with a contract underneath. We got Meryl! But in the end, Todd decides against marrying Courtney, which puts an end to their wedding plan once and for all. After Rutabaga leaves and insults PC's potential capabilities as a mother in the process, Judah tells Princess Carolyn that she will make a great mother. After Judah leaves, PC pulls out a positive pregnancy test confirming that she is indeed pregnant. Later that year, PC attends Mr. Peanut Butter's campaign fundraiser for his gubernatorial candidacy. While PC is using the bathroom in their pool house, the entire property collapses underground due to the fracking that Mr. Peanut Butter authorized in his backyard. PC PC and Todd wander through the underground tunnels looking for a way out and run into an army of ants. PC helps them negotiate a new labor deal with their queen, and they then help move Mr. Peanut Butter's house back above ground. After this, Princess Carolyn goes with Ralph to visit his family at Stilton Acres. What she didn't realize is that they were there celebrating St. Squeakivus, an anti-cat holiday which puts PC and Ralph's relationship in a rocky place and makes PC very uncomfortable. When leaving Stilton Acres, Ralph's parents insult PC to his face and he sticks up for her, saying that he loves her and telling them about their baby. I love Princess Carolyn and we're having a baby and I couldn't be happier. Unfortunately, shortly after this, PC has the worst day of her entire life. First, Courtney Portnoy fires her because of the mistaken and failed wedding debacles. Then she discovers that she has miscarried again and that pregnancy might not be in the cards for her. She also tries to get her necklace fixed, the one that her mother gave her, and the jewelry store informs her that it's not a family heirloom at all, but a cheap piece of jewelry from the 1960s. She also learns that during the previous year, Charlie Witherspoon offered to merge his agency with Vim and that Judah never told her about it. In her frustration, she fires Judah. PC struggles to figure out how to tell Ralph about her miscarriage, so she goes to her old apartment, which she still owns, but runs into Todd's new clown dentistry school. She ends up drinking with Todd and the clowns all night. Ralph eventually comes over to check on her, and they get in a fight about their relationship and the miscarriage. Princess Carolyn then breaks up with Ralph. Later that night, PC crashes on her couch at her office and talks to Bojack on the phone. She tells him that when she's having 
having a really bad day, she imagines her descendant doing a school report about her in the distant future, and it makes everything feel like it will turn out okay, even though it's not real. After this awful day, PC continues to spiral, drinking more often. In January 2018, Princess Carolyn is called into a meeting at Vim with a young writer named Flit McVicker. PC is very dismissive until she sees the name of the show, Filbert, the same name she and Ralph had decided on for their baby. Princess Carolyn takes special interest in this project, which seems to have more symbolic importance than actual importance. With the help of Todd and his clowntists, she makes her meeting with Lenny Turtletaub at Parrot Mount, who suggests she pitch the show to whattimeisitrightnow.com, but demands she attach an actor to the project. Shockingly, he wants Bojack Horseman for the role. In order to get the deal signed and approved on time, PC forges Bojack's name without asking if he'll do the project. Later, PC officially pitches the show to whattimeisitrightnow.com, and they approve, particularly because they're fans of Bojack. After another bender and spiral, Todd brings PC to the woods and ties her to a dentist chair, giving her one of her own patented get-your-shit-together speeches. Look, the woods are dark and scary, but the only way out is through. Princess Carolyn eventually goes to beg Bojack to work on the project for her, and shockingly, without any second guessing, Bojack agrees. He also tells her that she should consider adoption because she would make a great mother. By September 2018, Philbert is in full swing with Princess Carolyn producing the project. She's also in the process of adopting a child herself, but struggles with the caseworker she's paired up with at the adoption agency. Bojack is also having a hard time with the series and complains to PC, who begs him to just stick it out for the 10 weeks of filming. Princess Carolyn later decides to cast a cancelled actor named Vance Wagner to play Philbert's partner Fritz on the show, who's also receiving a Forgive Ye Award. When Bojack inadvertently looks disgusted at the award ceremony, he gets good press, which is also bad for Vance and for Philbert. PC has him try to clear it up, but he just further entrenches himself in his newfound positive reception from the feminist crowd. Vance eventually quits Filbert, and PC decides to cast Mr. Peanut Butter as Fritz instead. That same month, Princess Carolyn goes back to her hometown, Eden, North Carolina, to talk to a mother about potentially adopting her child. This brings back all kinds of memories of her childhood as she hadn't visited since her mother died. She meets with Sadie, who is 18 years old and isn't sure if she can keep her baby or not. While PC is trying to make a good impression on Sadie, she's continually interrupted by folks from the production of Filbert, which makes Sadie think that PC might be too busy to be a good mother. I know you're busy. I don't want me or my baby to get in the way of your career. That evening, Sadie's boyfriend suddenly proposes to her and implies that he wants to raise a child with her. PC tries to convince Sadie that he might not be trustworthy, but Sadie chastises Princess Carolyn for treating this adoption like a sales pitch. She puts her in her place and walks away from the adoption. Later, while working on Filbert, PC asks Todd, who is now the vice president of ad sales for what time is it right now? Com, if she can have an office on set. She's drafted the paperwork, but as he's about to sign, he accuses PC of eating his string cheese. They get into an argument over this that goes all the way to a mediator at the production studio. They eventually resolve the dispute and agree to be better co-workers and roommates, right as Todd discovers that his missing string cheese was in his jacket pocket all along. On Halloween 2018, Princess Carolyn once again attends Bojack's annual Halloween party as Amelia Earhart, and as always, she's answering the door. After Filbert wraps filming in November 2018, Mr. Peanut Butter approaches Princess Carolyn about optioning a greeting card that he found for a movie called Birthday Dad. PC doesn't really understand, but sees that the card was written by her ex, Ralph's company. The two get dinner together to catch up. While at dinner, PC gets a call from her caseworker about a woman at a nearby hospital who wants to give her baby up for adoption. Ralph helps PC race there to try and secure the adoption. Princess Carolyn meets the new baby, and her birth mother, Bridget, mistakes PC and Ralph as a couple. Ralph implies he'd like them to be a couple again, but PC rejects him. She says that she's ready to be a single mom and raise this baby by herself. I'm not afraid of how hard it's gonna be. I already love this baby, and that gives me so much power. I don't need anything else. And this actually ends up inspiring Bridget to raise the child herself, leaving PC childless again. Filbert premieres in early 2019, and before the premiere, Princess Carolyn is tasked with dealing with two writers who wrote jokes on popsicle sticks, who accuse Flip McVicker of plagiarizing one of their jokes in Filbert. She's able to solve the dispute at the Filbert premiere, where they also learn that the show has been renewed for a second season. Later in the year, while filming Filbert season two, in a drug-fueled stupor, Bojack ends up actually choking his co-star Gina during a choking scene. This is filmed by crew members and leaks, creating major gossip up in speculation. Princess Carolyn sets up a fluff piece interview with Biscuits Braxby so that Bojack and Gina can do major damage control. Before the interview, PC gets a call from Sadie in North Carolina, who's going into labor. She says that her boyfriend left her and she wants to give PC the baby, but she also says that if she can't get there by the time the baby is born, she's going to give the baby to someone else. Rather than race to Eden, PC ends up dealing with the PR nightmare. Philbert actually ends up getting cancelled for unrelated reasons after the robot CEO Henry Fondle is accused of sexual harassment. Now entering sleep mode. You you wanna sleep with me? That Instead of work with Flip to try and find the show a new home, PC leaves LA and goes to Eden to adopt her new child, 
who she says she's going to name Untitled Princess Carolyn Project. In mid to late 2019, PC is adjusting to life as a single mother while she manages and produces Mr. Peanut Butter's new movie, Birthday Dad. Unfortunately, Mr. Peanut Butter becomes difficult to work with, which greatly frustrates the director, Flea Daniels. When PC gets home after this debacle, her nanny quits, forcing PC to be more hands-on as a parent while dealing with her workload. The next day, Princess Carolyn has to go to a photo shoot for Manatee Fair for their Hollywood Women Can Do It All issue. She thinks about skipping this event until she learns that Vanessa Gecko is there, and then she attends. She has Todd watch her baby while she goes, only to discover that the kids were supposed to be a part of the photo shoot. Todd has to bring back the baby to the photo shoot after all. While at the shoot, PC gets roped into organizing an event at Vim for women in the industry, adding more to her full plate. This eventually morphs into a full-on gala. PC is then also roped into going to Bojack's rehab to pick up Mr. Peanut Butter. On the way there, Flea Daniels calls to complain about Birthday Dad, stating that it's only 42 minutes long and barely makes sense, eventually quitting the project. At Pastiche's rehab facility, PC takes a quick break that turns into a long nap. Bojack wakes her up and she realizes she missed the gala at Vim. PC gets the idea to sell the Birthday Dad movie cut as a pilot episode to MBN as a potential series, and MBN buys it. When PC gets to Vim, she realizes that the gala event has ended, but she has a real heart-to-heart -heart with Vanessa Gecko, who gives her some great advice about raising a child. You just have to do it the best that you can, and know that that's the best you can do. Yep. PC questions why they spent so long hating each other, and Gecko claims she never actually hated Princess Carolyn. When Princess Carolyn gets home, she spends some much needed time alone with her daughter, who she finally comes up with a name for, Ruthie. Isn't that right? Ruthie? Shortly after this, PC and Ruthie attend Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles' surprise wedding, which goes horribly wrong as Mr. Peanut Butter admits to Pickles that he cheated on her right before everyone jumps out for the surprise. They all have to hide themselves from the couple the rest of the night. While hiding, Ruthie escapes and PC and Todd have to chase her down without tipping off Mr. Peanut Butter or Pickles. She eventually recaptures Ruthie and escapes the house. While trying to get her back, PC recognizes that Todd has a real knack for childcare and asks him to be her permanent nanny. He agrees. PC continues to manage Mr. Peanut Butter, who has become a meme known as Sad dog online. PC thinks it's smart to lean into this meme. She also fields a call from Diane who wants advice on a book she's writing, which PC promptly sells and gives Diane six months to finish. Around this time, a major assistance strike hits Hollywood, shutting down the entire city, which obviously cannot function without assistance. PC and Lenny Turtletop are negotiating with the assistance leadership. PC initially tries to end the strike by simply offering the strike's leader, Casey, a promotion, which does work. PC eventually realizes that she was treated just as poorly when she was Marv's assistant and decides she actually should help the striking assistants and Instead, she contacts Judah and hires him to represent them. Judah manages to end the strike in a single sit-down negotiation. While talking to Judah, PC realizes that this strike was the most time she's gotten to spend with Ruthie, and also that Judah might be the assistant she should have promoted. In late 2019, Bojack, who's now out of rehab, shows up at PC's house. He brings her a painting as a gift and asks her for a recommendation for a drama professor position at Wesleyan University. While talking to Bojack, PC gets emotional about going back to work, worrying that her new connection with Ruthie will disappear. Bojack gives her some help advice, that she probably shouldn't be handling so many things hands-on since she's the boss. She needs other people to work close to her position. You are producing a show, running a company, catering to your clients, raising a child, a Todd. You need your own Princess Carolyn to take care of you. Princess Carolyn subsequently rehires Judah as Chief of Operations, giving her more free time to spend with Ruthie every week. In early 2020, PC tries to motivate Diane into finishing her book, which is a struggle. PC is eventually sent a few chapters of a different book by Diane, a young adult novel called called Ivy Tran Food Court Detective. Princess Carolyn encourages Diane to continue this project, but Diane doesn't want to. In spring 2020, Princess Carolyn, Todd, Ruthie, and Diane all attend the end-of-year performance for Bojack's drama class. After the performance, PC has a heart-to-heart -heart with Diane and convinces her that writing Ivy Tran is the best thing for her to do. Immediately after this, Todd discovers Bojack passed out on the ground, and they all retreat to Bojack's office. Bojack informs them that there are reporters looking into his past, but he isn't sure why, and they all start to brainstorm to figure out what the story is. They write everything bad that Bojack has ever done on a whiteboard. Eventually, the reporters call Diane, and they realize the story is about Sarah Lynn's death. PC thinks they can spin the story in Bojack's favor, but Diane objects and says he should just tell the truth. Bojack is then contacted by the reporters himself, and he immediately denies the allegations, ignoring Diane's advice. She leaves in objection. Princess Carolyn sticks around to try and help Bojack through it, claiming that she's stuck by him for 25 years, and that when she tells Ruthie about the great love of her life, she doesn't want it to have a sad ending. And when I tell my daughter the story of the great love of my life, I want it to have a happy ending. 
PC sets up an interview with Biscuits Braxby to address the new allegations. The interview actually goes very well, and Bojack comes out looking incredibly sympathetic. But because the ratings were so huge, they decide to do a second interview the following night, despite Princess Carolyn's objections. While at the interview, PC realizes that Todd has the night off, and Judah offers to watch Ruthie for her. The second interview is an absolute disaster, making Bojack out to be a monster. Princess Carolyn seems pretty over it at this point. She reinforces that she told Bojack to go back to Wesleyan and not do the second interview. Told you to do just the one interview and go back to Connecticut. PC arrives home that night, emotionally exhausted, and embraces the time she can spend with Ruthie and Judah. Not long after this, Todd and his new girlfriend Maude convince PC to let them open a daycare for her office employees. They also tell her that they're moving in together. Princess Carolyn forgets to bring a gift to their housewarming party, but Judah brought two gifts and lets PC attach herself to them. Princess Carolyn learns that Judah is in a band and shows interest in going to his gig. But, shortly after, Lenny Turtletop calls Princess Carolyn and asks if she can lead a new female-centric production company, basically giving her the opportunity to pitch her dream movie studio. PC and Judah work together pulling data for the pitch, but PC tells Judah to leave and make his gig. While working on the pitch, PC decides that it isn't important, and what is important is watching Judah's show. She arrives only to find that Judah went back to the office himself to help Princess Carolyn. At the office, Princess Carolyn and Judah decide they should get their own financiers and start the movie studio themselves. Princess Carolyn asks Judah to perform for her and he plays a love song for her. Shortly after this, Bojack is sent to prison for breaking and entering into his old house. He's sentenced to 14 months in prison. During this time, Princess Carolyn gets engaged to Judah, and in 2021, they get married. They have two weddings, a real one and an industry one. Near the end of his prison term, Bojack is released from prison for a day to attend Princess Carolyn's industry wedding. At the wedding, Princess Carolyn and Bojack catch up. She expresses that his new movie, The Horny Unicorn, is trending like crazy, and that he has a real shot at a comeback. Bojack tells her he started a drama program in prison and wants to volunteer when he gets out. The pair then share a dance and reminisce about their lives and what could have been. Bojack expresses that if he does get his comeback, he'll need help Help when he gets out of prison, and PC says that she can recommend some excellent people, suggesting that she is done working with Bojack herself. And as a bonus, in a fictional 2021, in a flooded Los Angeles, Princess Carolyn's imaginary descendant Ruthie tells her entire class about the worst day of Princess Carolyn's life. This was, of course, all a fabrication that PC used to cope with her worst days. PC is one of the most complete characters in Bojack Horseman, which is saying a lot. We learned so, so much about her entire life and history and how her childhood helped mold her into the person we saw throughout the show, the good and the bad. She's truly one of my favorite characters in TV history, so thanks for joining me on this timeline journey. <sighs>
But Bojack can't really meet her halfway in much of anything. We don't see him put in a fraction of the same effort towards meeting her needs. Part of it is because she doesn't force boundaries or long-term consequences onto him, but it's also because Bojack doesn't know what a stable relationship looks like, at least outside of what he sees on TV sitcoms. Bojack's approach to dealing with conflict in adulthood is every horseman for himself. He's profoundly self-centered and jaded, only caring about stuff like, do people like me, and where is the alcohol? He lacks the maturity to be a considerate partner to Princess Carolyn, whether she's functioning as his agent or his lover. He just sees her as a mother figure he wasn't privy to as a foal, and a mother figure is never a great thing to date. But don't tell it to half of the porn out there. Despite this, PC is fairly understanding of how messed up Bojack is, and it's one of the reasons she stays with him for so long. You're doing the best you can considering your asshole parents. PC does get better at calling Bojack out on his horse shit, but unfortunately, this reckoning only really starts to take shape after they whittle their relationship down to professional only. After a fight that ends in PC inexplicably preparing a fancy risotto for a food critic at Elefante, Bojack finally admits that he knows he sucks and that he doesn't deserve her. I do love you, by the way. I mean, as, as much as I'm capable of loving anyone, which is never enough. I'm sorry. Despite this revelation, Bojack ends up dropping PC as his agent, which sends her business into a tailspin. This ends up as a blessing in disguise for PC, who finally has enough space from Bojack to grow. Without PC's safety net underneath him, Bojack falls into one of his many spirals. Princess Carolyn is forced to restructure not only her struggling agency, but her love life as well. She uses her newfound free time to get back out there, at the recommendation of the assistant she'd end up marrying. Again, you've had time, you're already this far into the video. This is not a spoiler. Even though they cross paths constantly throughout the series, PC and Bojack never worked together as a healthy couple. She stuck with him for so long simply because he appealed to her ingrained codependent tendencies. I don't want to spend the next seven years of my life falling in and out of love with you. I've wasted too much time waiting for things to happen and I'm not gonna wait anymore. Princess Carolyn compulsively takes care of others when she doesn't know how to take care of herself, which, as it happens, was a pretty long era for her. When she gets out of her relationship with Bojack, it is the first step into taking her own needs into consideration. There was no way this would have happened if she kept herself ingrained in the imbalanced dynamic she had with Bojack. <laughs> In the midst of a rebound phase from Bojack, PC runs into the tall, boyishly handsome, but definitely fully grown human male Vincent Adultman at Bellakin's bar. He's everything she wants at that moment. A good listener, a kind, and also adult man. The works, really. They hit it off over some alcohols and have a great time chatting about life in the business factory world. Classic adult things. PC's infatuation may not be entirely genuine, as we see early on that she loves to show off Vincent to anyone with an earshot, particularly Bojack. I mean, can you imagine this body in a swimsuit? I literally cannot. Their relationship hits choppy water fairly quickly, as will happen with impulsive rebounds. Vincent has trouble prioritizing his life. When he's not talking about doing a business, he's only interested in going to R-rated movies and riding the adult rides at Disneyland. He lacks the spontaneous romantic passion that PC craves, which is shocking considering how he's clearly one man and not three kids in a trench coat. PC demands the pair break up because she realizes that there's more to life than work by now, and doesn't love that Vincent is echoing the parts of her workaholic life that she's trying to overcome. In a big romantic gesture, Vincent tries to win Princess Carolyn back by crashing a party at Mr. Peanut Butter's house, pledging his love to her in front of everyone, which is an awesome move and everyone should try it because it always works. I had an attitude problem. But then I took a time out and I thought about what I did. The pair get back together only for more lies and secrets to start piling up. Princess Carolyn sees a mysterious child crossing the street that is the spitting image of her beau. Clearly, Vincent's been hiding a secret family this whole time. There's no way he just has two friends with sturdy shoulders. Vincent tries to wriggle out of the drama with his very believable story. Kevin is my son, but I'm divorced. And Kevin is in the bathroom, so you can see we're clearly two different people. One adult and one child. Even though this makes perfect sense, the lack of transparency and honesty is the true breaking point in PC and Vincent's relationship. Vincent is more interested in navigating his own web of lies than working to gain PC's trust. Princess Carolyn also levels with Vincent, stating that she only fell in love with the idea of him, rather than who he really was, which was definitely one single man. At the end of their time together, they both realize they still need to do some internal work before they can hope for a healthy, adult relationship. 
The next paramour that enters PC's life is her fast-talking rabbit colleague, Rutabaga Rabidowitz. The two jive really well as professional pals, which eventually leads to them having an office fling. Rutabaga seems chipper on the surface, but often displays a two-facedness commonly associated with Hollywood bigwigs. At the end of the day, he's all about his own successes and will deceive PC to no end to get what he wants, all while slick-talking his little tail off. You were seriously killing it in the department of kicking ass in regards to you being an agent and being good at it vis-a-vis -vis crushing it. There's no substance to Rutabaga as a boyfriend. His affair with PC lasts for three months and is toxic in many ways, most notably because he's cheating on his wife, which is generally frowned upon, unless they're both into it. Rutabaga tries to woe is me his way around this huge red flag, consistently reassuring PC that he and his wife Katie are going to be divorced any day now. He strings her along so far, in fact, that he convinces her to start a whole ass agency with him. Like a classic narcissist, Rutabaga manipulates PC by saying he could really start this agency with anyone, right before pouring on the compliment bombing that is particularly effective on PC at this time in her life. You're an amazing agent, and you're bright, and you're fun, and... I think we could make something really special. All the while, his only move here was just to stick PC with the financial responsibility of this impulsive decision to leave Vigor, because divorce proceedings. He then says quite possibly one of the shittiest things said by any character in BoJack Horseman, which is quite an accomplishment. Carolyn, you're a single woman in your 40s. Can you really afford to be picky? This is it, Carolyn. This is what you get, and if you're holding out for something better, well... I hate to break it to you, but you're gonna be alone for a long time. What Rutabaga didn't foresee is that PC has grown enough to tell him to eat shit. She'd rather be alone than stay with someone so blatantly selfish. So even with the massive burden of starting a new agency now on her shoulders, PC does what any self-respecting cat lady would do. She throws the whole man out. It was pretty apparent from the jump that this relationship was doomed to fail. Rutabaga is a total dickhead. He's cowardly, disingenuous, self-absorbed, and to a lesser degree of importance, really annoying. I got seven kids and a wife who's really into me co-parenting, or as she calls it, parenting. He thought he could manipulate PC in order to alleviate marital stresses, further his career, and avoid financial responsibility. PC is taken for a ride, but ultimately outsmarts him and kicks his ass to the curb, out-manipulating the manipulator. The only good thing Rutabaga did for PC was push her in the right direction, albeit under sketchy pretenses. His encouragement gave her the boost she needed during a low point to leave her comfort zone, and once she got there, she was more than happy to leave his toxic deadweight behind. At the tail end of an evening of blind dates, PC meets a greeting card company owner, Ralph Stilton, a polite and intelligent mouse fella. Despite the glaringly obvious differences up top, the two have a healthy and fun chemistry. PC can't quite commit herself to another date right off the bat due to work stuff, but they exchange numbers and hope to keep in touch. Here's my card. If you're ever free, give me a call. If not, I'll just meet somebody else and invite you to the wedding. <laughs> oh, thanks. You don't have to come, but... Mm send a gift. When PC calls him up, Ralph sticks to this bit and tricks her into thinking he's met a ballerina and already married her, before revealing he's been thinking about Princess Carolyn non-stop. Hey, the mouse has game. Their ensuing relationship looks to be the first healthy and happy one of its kind in Princess Carolyn's life, so far. Ralph is lively and caring, and it doesn't hurt that he's also the heir to the Stilton luxury hotel chain, but he's not a douchebag about it and chooses to live a more subdued lifestyle than the rest of his one percenter family. PC is not without her share of hesitations, however. She has a hard time telling Ralph the truth about about her miscarriage because she fears the repercussions. Ralph eases her fears, stating that he's not worried about being stuck with her, but rather an opportunity to raise a family with her. When the two move in together, PC keeps the lease to her old apartment in a one foot out the door, head for the hills if things go rough type of way, which is indicative of her relationship anxieties. Deep down, PC believes things are too good to be true with Ralph, and when you look at her track record, you can certainly understand why she might feel this way. This makes it harder for her to be truly vulnerable and open with him at times. The first big wedge in their relationship ends up being Ralph's wealthy family. Like most people who have never had to do their own chores, they appear to be very nice and welcoming on the surface while remaining firmly out of touch with how the real world works. When PC and Ralph visit the Stiltons for the holidays, Ralph doesn't let his family know that PC is pregnant, wanting them to warm up to her first. And then the racist, mice supremacist shit starts going down. Ralph's family celebrates an aggressively anti-cat holiday as an annual tradition, which probably should have been explained to PC on the drive up. Like, for real. Imagine bringing your partner to a family dinner without telling them that there will be an enthusiastic screening of Birth of a Nation. To his credit, I guess, Ralph does eventually stand up for PC after his mother gets mad that Princess Carolyn isn't into the racist bullshit going on. But man, does it take him a while to get there. For your information, there's not gonna be a next one because I love Princess Carolyn and we're having a baby and I couldn't be happier. It's eventually a nice gesture, but life gets in the way once again. PC loses a client, finds out Judah made some pretty big business mistakes, and to top it all off, 
off, breaks the clasp off her signature necklace. Oh yeah, and then another miscarriage happens. Many speculate that PC's signature necklace itself is to blame for her infertility issues as it's made out of lead, but we of course can't confirm this definitively. Understandably, this is a lot for PC to bear, and she goes on a bender which culminates in her lying to Ralph about the entire situation. Surely this will end great. PC is normally able to keep her shit together, but this second miscarriage is a particularly tough sting because it feels like a subconscious jab from her mother, who was what you might call very fertile. In fact, it was the only talent Cutie had aside from gaslighting her daughter and passing out on the couch. In the midst of not keeping her shit together, she takes out her frustrations on Ralph and accidentally reveals that she lost the unborn Filbert. Not only has she been hiding this, but she's also been hiding her unfortunate history with miscarriages, which puts a definite strain on their relationship. Obviously, this kind of thing is not easy to talk about, out, but it's certainly something you need to make your partner aware of if you're serious about starting a family with them. Now begins the stage of their relationship where things break down. Their communication is strained. Every innocuous comment feels like a personal attack. PC does not want to hear about alternatives to pregnancy. Her and Ralph are now in two entirely different headspaces regarding family planning options. And Ralph doesn't quite understand why having a traditional pregnancy means so much to Princess Carolyn. Ralph has mentioned that he loves how easy his relationship with PC is, but what we start seeing is that it might have only been easy because Princess Carolyn was doing a lot of work to keep up that facade, and now her classic workaholic, I can do it all if I power through mentality, is surfacing in a rough way. She has a hard time accepting her limitations, and it's starting to wear on their relationship. This leads to the end of their relationship, at Princess Carolyn's insistence. He's reluctant to leave her since she's clearly struggling with a lot internally, but he does accept that they are at an impasse. I just think we should maybe talk about other options. Okay, here's another option. Get out of my apartment! I'm it's a bummer how things ended with PC and Ralph in a lot of ways. It certainly can be seen as a right person, wrong time situation. Ralph has clearly been the best partner to Princess Carolyn at this point in her life, but the two couldn't quite align enough in order to move on to the next stage of their relationship. Ralph can be timid and conflict avoidant, but functionally, he wanted their relationship to be upfront and honest, working through issues together as a team. Princess Carolyn has a hard time accepting this type of vulnerability due to past traumas and failed relationships. She's used to being disappointed by lovers so often that she naturally feels unable to rely on anyone else, even when they have the purest of intentions. She pushes Ralph away because she does not feel in control with him, and she doesn't believe he is in it for the long haul with her fertility situation. The two reconnect some time later, and they patch things up in a pretty mature way. Ralph admits to some regrets about the way things went down, but PC ultimately makes it clear that she's ready to approach motherhood on her own terms as a single mother. PC is not afraid of being a single mom, but doesn't yet grasp how drastic of a change motherhood will be for her. Between the lifestyle adaptations and increased workload, being a single parent is a tough job. A, uh, ruthless one, if you will. Eh? Eh? Hey folks, thanks as always for watching the video. If you're a fan of the channel, please check out my Patreon. It's the best way to support me directly. Also, feel free to follow me on social media, particularly Letterboxd, which is the only good social media platform. Thanks. Finally, we have former employee slash current badass, ya boy, Judah Man Now Dog. Look, Judah rules. If you don't like Judah, you can fight me about it. Judah is an ideal employee, professional, polite, and highly capable. He was PC's rock when they were getting Vim off of the ground, he kept her schedule in order, reminded her of important calls and meetings, and would take on new responsibilities at the office with no complaints. Judah's flat affect and restrained emotions definitely take some getting used to, but he's an incredibly reliable person and definitely someone you want to have on your team. Like anyone else, he's also not without his own mistakes. Judah does a bit of sneaking around PC's back as her assistant and meets with a very sticky Charlie Witherspoon to entertain the idea of a merger between Vim and Vigor. Judah keeps this meeting under wraps for a while, and in his mind, it does appear to be done out of care for PC and her chaotic workload. Princess Carolyn can be a proud woman. I'm glad you came to me first. This occurs in the midst of PC's most stressful period, trying to do way too much at the same time, dealing with a challenge from Anna Spanakopita, battling Vanessa Gecko and Rutabaga to secure roles for Bojack. When it all falls through, putting the agency in dire straits, PC lashes out at Judah. Despite this, in a shocking display of loyalty, Judah forgoes his salary for three months to try and soften the financial blow. Not only does he support PC financially, but he takes these moments to support her emotionally as well. There is one thing I should probably mention. What is it, Judah? Maybe this is an opportunity to 
live one of your other eight lives. Unfortunately, it's shortly after this poignant moment that PC finds out about the merger offer. When she confronts Judah about this, she's hoping it's all a lie, but Judah doesn't hide it from her at all. Even though all of his intentions were good, he can't escape the fact that he betrayed her trust. It didn't help that she found this out on probably the worst day of her adult life. If I can't trust you, then I can't work with you. You're fired. <sighs> Judah is of course disappointed, but leaves calmly. Very Judah-like response. Thank you for my time here, Princess Carolyn. It's been very pleasurable until now. This part is sad. PC soldiers on, adopting a baby girl eventually, managing Vim by herself, and assigning the profoundly unhelpful Stuart to assistant duties. She's certainly struggling to keep her head above water with all of these responsibilities. Classic Princess Carolyn shit right there. Exhausted, overscheduled, underslept, and not necessarily loving it. A couple of years later, PC and Lenny Turtletop lead the negotiations in the Hollywood assistance protest. They're handled in a pretty standard Hollywood fashion, greedily and speedily. But during a meeting with noted dumbass Stuart, PC has has a moment of clarity. She sees that she is using the same manipulative tactics that her former boss used to use on her, stringing underpaid folks along, encouraging them to accept shitty treatment with the promise of some gain down the road. Having had this moral realization, PC gives Stuart the phone number for someone who can help get things back on track, an expert negotiator by the name of Judah. Once an actual agreement is reached in the strike negotiations, PC invites Judah back to work at Vim with a hell of a promotion. This serves as both an olive branch for how things ended and a sincere recognition for how much PC trusts him. Judah returning to Vim significantly de-stresses PC's life. He is a singularly trustworthy and reliable colleague in a sea of Hollywood flakes who will tell you they can't make your party because they have COVID, but then post a dozen Instagram stories at the club. Judah also tends to interpret things very literally, and it is heavily implied that he lies somewhere on the autism spectrum. Between his orderly nature, difficulty interpreting tone of voice, and his banned spectrum of enchantment, there are certainly a few hints to the audience that this is the case. And these aspects of Judah's personality actually make him thrive in the highly detail-oriented environment of Hollywood. He's incredibly thoughtful and thorough, ensuring PC's life is as streamlined as possible. He's exactly what PC needs at this point in her life. She's been through the ringer with partners over the years, and Judah represents all of the things that these previous men were missing. He's attentive to her needs, unlike Bojack, he isn't caught up in his own web of lies like full-grown adult Vince and Adultman, and has a healthy work-life balance. He's not currently cheating on a wife, unlike Rutabaga, and unlike Ralph, he knows how to communicate communicate with PC and isn't thrown off by her specific idiosyncrasies that could be perceived as difficult. Plus, he serenades her with guitar, which I don't think anyone has ever done for her in her whole life. He's the logical conclusion to her romantic saga. Emphasis on logical. What can I say? He's pretty much perfect for her. Despite all the chaos in her life, PC falls for a guy with long hair and a beard who loves to serenade her with guitar music. I don't know why, but that resonates with me somehow. Over the course of the series, we see Princess Carolyn go from tolerating deplorable behavior to recognizing and receiving the better treatment she deserves. This princess has kissed more than her fair share of frogs throughout her life, and they pretty much all remained frogs. She deserved a happy ending. And a Prince Charming. That Prince Charming is Judah. There's a reason the final episode is her wedding. Some fans definitely seem to prefer Ralph more, and that's also fair in its own way. PC and Ralph have a more cutesy rom-com vibe when they're not hanging out with a bunch of anti-cat bigots. And it can be hard to accept that he didn't do anything abhorrently wrong in their relationship. Sometimes a string of specific circumstances cause good things to end, and that's just the way it is. It's sad. And if you're one of those who thinks Ralph was a better endgame, I get it. But things not working out with Ralph was necessary for PC to recognize and admit that she has some deep-seated issues to work out. It was a moment of clarity where she had run out of messes to clean up in other people's lives and was forced to reevaluate her own flaws. PC's entire character arc is based on viewing her life and the conflicts within through the lens of the sunk cost fallacy. This is when someone sticks with something detrimental simply because of the amount of work they've already put into it. Like having a shitty 1997 Ford Taurus that barely runs but has had so much money dumped into it you can't bring yourself to junk it. This is why PC had a hard time leaving her mother as a young woman, why she stuck with Bojack for so long, why she put up with being an assistant for 14 miserable years, and why she always resists asking for help whenever she's in turmoil. She's made caretaking and damage control part of her own self-image. You water the plants here? I started doing it as an intern, but then no one told me to stop, so it's still kind of my job. Pretty much every member of BoJack Horseman has their own issues with their biological families, some more extreme than others, certainly. But like many Hollywood transplants, they come to find their own family outside of their blood relatives with those they choose to surround themselves with. Despite years of setbacks, PC has finally created her own found family, with a husband who loves her and a lovely adopted daughter. The fall might have been lofty, but Princess Carolyn always lands on her feet. 
Ruthie is one of the most popular episodes of BoJack Horseman and showcases the worst and most heartbreaking day of Princess Carolyn's life. As she navigates this difficult time, countless roadblocks and hiccups force Princess Carolyn to not just question herself, but her own concept of her past, present, and future. On top of this, it's all told through the lens of PC's descendant, Ruthie, who is telling her class in the future about her ancestor, Princess Carolyn, a framing device that is equal parts effective and heartbreaking. Ruthie is an episode that really hones in on the core of Princess Carolyn as a character, somebody who no matter how many licks she takes, always lands on her feet. Today is going to be great. It's hard to think of a worse possible day for Princess Carolyn than the one showcased in Ruthie. Almost every single area of PC's life is completely upended in some way over the course of this day. It's hard to imagine one person being able to take this much on. The first major blow comes early in the day when her client, Courtney Portnoy, fires her. You're fired. I'm fired? This might feel just like a day in the life of an agent, but seasons three and four of BoJack firmly establish how precarious Vim's business model is. They're a small agency and they rely on having a few high-quality clients who are versatile and can earn them big paydays, rather than having a lot of smaller clients to fall back on. Princess Carolyn has worked her ass off the entire season to cater to Portnoy's needs as a client. Despite this, between the gun movie misfiring and her nuptials turning into nuptials and her blaming you for both of those things? Basically, Courtney's action film Mistaken was put on ice after a series of mass shootings tanked the film's box office viability. But when this happened, Princess Carolyn put in so much work so that the film could be released. First, they tried to rework the film, and Diane even wrote an article about gun ownership for women that really swayed public opinion on firearms. PC used this to frame the film as pro-women empowerment, which nearly worked, until another mass shooting put an end to it. On top of this, PC and Rutabaga had organized an entire sham wedding for Courtney and Todd to help drum up publicity and shift her image. They put so much work in to plan an entire wedding in a tiny amount of time, which ultimately was all derailed when Todd got cold feet and decided he didn't want to do it. These failures were not on Princess Carolyn. She put the work in to do what her client requested of her, yet she gets the entirety of the blame. This not only hurts PC personally, but this is a major blow to Vim's viability as a company. And on top of this, PC's rival Vanessa Gecko shoves it in her face. Did you get fired? Ugh. This spirals even further when PC runs into Charlie Witherspoon, who runs her former agency, Vigor. He talks to her about his attempts to purchase Vim the previous year and merge the agencies, which, as it turns out, was something that Princess Carolyn didn't realize even happened. Charlie had approached Judah, who opted not to tell Princess Carolyn. This completely shifts PC's perception of her most trusted employee and professional partner, somebody she had complete and total confidence in, and now that confidence had shattered. When Princess Carolyn confronts Judah about this, he defends himself and tries to justify his decision. Everything Judah ever does, he feels is in PC's best interests. But Princess Carolyn is too hurt by this betrayal. If I can't trust you, then I can't work with you. You're fired. Going into this day, Princess Carolyn thought she had a complete picture of her current professional situation, but by the end of the day, that picture had shattered. Princess Carolyn's professional life wasn't the only thing that shattered, because her plans and picture of her own future derail in an even more devastating way as well. When visiting the doctor to check on her pregnancy, she discovered that she's had a miscarriage, now for the fifth time in her life. And unfortunately, Ralph makes this even more difficult for PC. When he calls her to get an update on the doctor's appointment, he says something that makes it tougher for Princess Carolyn to tell Ralph what she's just learned. Everything is so easy with you, Princess Carolyn. I mean, that's why I love you. Obviously, PC had just learned something incredibly difficult, and now had to decide if she was going to shatter Ralph's own perceptions of their relationship by making things significantly less easy. This devastating blow began to shift her own perception of her future, which at this point she was imagining to be with Ralph and their son Filbert. While at dinner with Ralph, PC can see Ralph imagining that hopeful future. Ruthie actually says it best in her speech to her class. A reality she herself had lived in just hours before, and to which she now longed desperately to return. Princess Carolyn abruptly leaves dinner, and instead of going to her home with Ralph, she goes back to her own apartment. When Ralph finally finds her there, she reveals the truth, that she had miscarried, and that she's miscarried many times before, and that this might not be an easy road for them. You need to live in this. You need to get used to this because if you're serious about having a baby with me, this could happen again. Through her entire life, PC has always managed to land on her feet. She is convinced that no matter how hard this is, she will be able to conceive and have that baby. 
But when Ralph suggests that maybe they look into other options, it shows that his confidence in Princess Carolyn does not match her own. And this is not acceptable to PC. Get out! Save it for your next girlfriend. The one you can take home to your parents. The one who's easy. And just like that, Princess Carolyn's entire perception of her ideal future is gone. But it's fake. The last aspect of Princess Carolyn's world-shattering day has to do with her own history, her ancestry. When she accidentally breaks her necklace, the one that was given to her by her mother, she takes it to the jewelry shop to have the clasp replaced. PC's understanding of this necklace is important. It was allegedly brought to the US by her ancestors and was one of the few things that wasn't sold off as the family struggled and was forced to take desperate measures to make ends meet. It was the one thing they could pass down so that they could remember who they were. A symbol of the tenacity and stick to that has for generations led my family to always land on their feet. We even saw the moment that PC was given this necklace by her mother in season five's The Amelia Earhart Story. In this moment, an 18-year-old Princess Carolyn had just learned that she was pregnant and believed that her hopes and dreams were over. At this point, this was likely the most difficult thing PC had ever faced in her life. This is when Princess Carolyn's mother gives her the necklace. And when you wear this, I want you to remember that you've come from a long line of women who've taken our licks, but we always land on our feet. So to Princess Carolyn, this is far more than just a necklace. This is a symbol of not only her connection with her mother and not only her line of hardworking ancestors, but also a symbol of the very attitude that defines Princess Carolyn. Going all the way back to the very first episodes that focused on her, Princess Carolyn is a character that takes hit after hit, but always lands on her feet. She always finds a way. And today, at least for the day, this idea itself comes crashing down around her when she learns a devastating truth about the necklace. This is costume jewelry from J.C. Penney, circa 1963. Somebody just told you a story. I'm sorry. This news comes especially hard because it's delivered to her immediately after the news of her miscarriage. This necklace represents the very thing that helps PC pick herself back up after a brutal blow, and for her to go and retrieve that symbol, and then also be told that this symbol itself is meaningless, devastates her entire worldview. She breaks down crying in her car, one of the few times we see her cry in the entire series. Yeah, well, it makes me feel better. One other aspect of Princess Carolyn's bad day, and a huge part of her life up to that point, is Bojack Horseman's role. At the beginning of the day, PC has a conversation with Bojack about the offers he's been getting through Vim, despite him not being represented by PC anymore. Princess Carolyn is determined to keep it this way, and keeps telling him that she does not work for him. Judah even brings up that re-signing Bojack, now that he's getting so many offers, could really help Vim stay afloat. But Princess Carolyn is determined to make things work without relying on Bojack. Bojack fired her in Season 3 after she begged him to give her another chance, and rightfully, Princess Carolyn doesn't want to go crawling back to him. She's already spent so much of her life committed to Bojack, she needs to find her own sense of self and success without him. But at the end of her very worst day, as she sits alone in her office, the one person there to talk to her is Bojack Horseman. And he showcases the exact reason that PC was trying to maintain a life without him. When he asks her how her day was, he doesn't even let her answer. He just goes on about his own minuscule problems, mostly frozen yogurt related. But PC actually just lets him vent, and then she gives him some advice. She says on her worst days, she imagines her distant descendant giving a school report about Princess Carolyn herself. And when I think about that, I think about how everything's going to work out. Because how else could she tell people? This, of course, shatters our own perceptions of this episode and PC's future, as we've been told this story by Ruthie, the very thing that led us to believe that in the end, everything would work out for Princess Carolyn. But of course, as we the audience know, everything does work out for PC in the end. It just doesn't match her own or even our own expectations of her future. Because despite all of these devastating blows to Princess Carolyn's sense of self, I think there's one important thing about the end of the episode that showcases PC's continued tenacity. Though PC has learned that everything she believed about her necklace and her own ancestors was a lie, she is also able to recognize that this story actually didn't matter, that the hope and grit it inspired still existed despite being a fable. We have seen time and time again that Princess Carolyn has been guided and driven by this tenacity inspired by these fabled ancestors. 
It's the core of her character. And just because the thing that shaped her to be this way wasn't true, it doesn't mean it wasn't important. And PC definitely recognizes this. Because even after this horrible day, where she learns this truth, she still panics when she realizes she's lost her necklace. And after she breaks up with Ralph, she returns to her office to find the necklace sitting on the ground. She replaces the clasp with a paperclip, a representation of that very tenacity the necklace represents, and she puts it back on. Because the necklace still represents these things to Princess Carolyn, but now it isn't some magical ability granted by the ancestors that watch over her, or something she's inherited from her mother. It's actually a symbol of Princess Carolyn herself. Every time she's landed back on her feet, that was Princess Carolyn, not a necklace, not her mother, not her ancestors. It was Princess Carolyn. Best Thing That Ever Happened is one of the most emotionally bitter episodes of BoJack Horseman. It examines the shaky relationship between the titular horse and his on-again, off-again girlfriend slash agent, Princess Carolyn, as well as their toxic codependent bond. It's a gut-wrenching examination of a decaying partnership between two people with similarly traumatic origins who deal with conflict in notably different ways. Interestingly, it is one of only two bottle episodes in the entire series, along with Free Churro, as the story itself has no major set pieces, just a series of tense and volatile conversations between our leads at the restaurant Elefante. Though sometimes brutal and hard to watch, it is a pivotal episode in the series as it showcases the breakdown of Bojack's longest lasting relationship, colored by resentment, fractured communication, and broken promises. Don't you break my heart, Bojack Horseman. It's important to note that this is an immediate continuation of the events of the episode The Bojack Horseman Show. At this point, Princess Carolyn becomes Bojack's agent after being an assistant for 14 years. PC finds a project called Mitch's Life, and Bojack signs on after he hits it off with the creator, Cuddly Whiskers. PC later joins him at the table read, and the pilot script goes over so well that the two enthusiastic studio executives have no notes for them. We love this show. Bojack, I'm calling it right now. This show is gonna be as big as horsing around. In a bout of imposter syndrome combined with a desire to distance himself from his sitcom roots, Bojack belittles PC's advice to not question their good fortune. Bojack and Cuddly Whiskers retool the script into an edgy mockumentary with tacky anti-catchphrases. At the premiere party, he approaches Princess Carolyn, who showed up despite how rude he was to her before. She congratulates him, but refuses to kiss him, stating while she's still his agent and friend, she's not interested in pursuing him romantically anymore. I don't want to spend the next seven years of my life falling in and out of love with you. I've wasted too much time waiting for things to happen and I'm not gonna wait anymore. Best thing that ever happens begins the following morning in the aftermath of the disastrous premiere of the BoJack Horseman show. Wallowing in self-pity from his own bad judgment, BoJack begs Princess Carolyn to comfort him at home. PC finds him face down in pizza boxes and does her best to cheer him up. He subsequently puts her on a pedestal, saying he would be directionless without her as she's the best thing to ever happen to him. You're my lighthouse, my Garmin. You're the little plastic table they put in pizza boxes to keep the pizza from getting smushed. Your Princess Carolyn. But Bojack has used the best thing that ever happened many times before, and PC knows this, as showcased in season one's Say Anything. You say that every time something bad happens. Some of the things he's referred to as the best thing that ever happened to him include not being nominated for a People's Choice Award, getting caught with a pound of cocaine, impregnating a sex worker, and sneezing on Marissa Tomei. What started off as a non sequitur joke has become an increasingly worrying pattern of behavior, usually involving Princess Carolyn cleaning up the mess for him time and time again. She calls him out for this behavior in the episode and attempts to set professional boundaries, which he immediately ignores in favor of serving his own impulsive whims. Bojack's aggrandizing ends immediately after they sleep together, as PC wistfully hopes he won't destroy her aspirations for love again. From episode 1, we've seen that Bojack is commitment-phobic, prone to indulging in numerous meaningless hookups to fuel his own hedonistic desires. Fundamentally, PC knows that Bojack isn't going to be the right partner for her due to his selfishness and immaturity not aligning with her desire for a family. However, they they have become so emotionally intertwined that it's difficult for her to separate completely from him, despite his persistent disregard for her feelings and well-being. Ironically, even PC's season 1 flame Vincent Adultman showed more concern for her feelings than Bojack did. The episode continues with an annoyed Bojack waiting for Princess Carolyn to arrive at Elefante for a dinner meeting. In the previous episode, Old Acquaintance, Princess Carolyn drops the ball on two major time-contingent projects for Bojack. Flight of the Pegasus, headed by Major Director David Pincher, and Jelly Bell, headed by Kelsey Jannings, whom Bojack has been trying to make peace with after her firing from Secretariat. Through some competitive meddling by Rutabaga Rabidowicz and Vanessa Gecko, PC ends up losing both projects for Bojack on New Year's Eve. To make matters
matters worse, Bojack is too cowardly to tell Bradley Hitler Smith that he doesn't want to be involved in his Horse and Around spinoff, Ethan Around. He hides behind his ruthless publicist, Anna Spanakopita, who does Bojack's dirty work for him. You are not a television star. You have no talent, and I am forgetting your face even as I'm looking at it. Anna is also the one who pushes Bojack to fire Princess Carolyn, despite being one of PC's last major clients at Vim. PC does her best to stall for time, delaying the inevitable with the help of Sandro, the head waiter at Elefante. Since Bojack bought Elefante on a whim in season one, Sandro has become the de facto manager, despite the obvious strain it's put on his relationships with his family and therapist. Bojack's dismissive nature ignores these statements. He delusionally claims the restaurant practically runs itself, showcasing again his primary concerns with his own perceptions over the well-being of others. Even Bojack's weak attempts to separate from PC at this point are being prompted by Anna Spanakopita's manipulation. He has to resort to using flashcards as he talks to PC to not meander away from the points he was coached on addressing. Bojack's singular goal for the season thus far has been wanting to win an Oscar for his role in Secretariat. Bojack believes that by winning an Academy Award, he'll be remembered and worth something in the eyes of the public. With this motivation, his behavior becomes increasingly self-centered and cruel, allowing his ego to trample over the feelings of friends and colleagues. This is because Bojack doesn't have any other internal drive for his own self-worth outside of performing. All he knows and understands is that his primary source of validation comes from an audience. He was taught this during his youth by both the forceful assertions of his mother Beatrice and from watching grand gestures on various television shows, internalizing it as an expression of love. Despite this tenuous hold on his self-worth, Bojack is still notoriously picky and flaky regarding the roles he chooses. His unreliability is, ironically, the most reliable aspect about him. Bojack tries to fire Princess Carolyn, but she immediately redirects the conversation into discussing a few other roles she's been seeking out for him. She explains how this is the first time she's had a major slip-up in 23 years. To her, their arguments have just become a part of their routine, and PC sees it as nothing more than his typical silent treatment, which will eventually end when Bojack clamors for more work. Their relationship is a constant struggle between new opportunities and damage control, with no signs of change in sight. Bojack heads outside as PC follows him, and claims that because he's in a sexual relationship with Anna, he's now passively following her instructions without thinking for himself. She points out that she stuck with him even when nobody wanted to hire him, despite how much he's weighed her down professionally. It's not like he makes this company any money, and he does seem to take up an awful lot of your time. Princess Carolyn is steadfast, continually going above and beyond to help Bojack get a wide variety of roles, even though he continually complains. Resentful of his abrupt dismissal, PC doesn't hold back any of her frustrations about Bojack. This is for the best. I no longer have to lug your talentless, self-centered, self-sabotaging, deadweight carcass and faded talent around my neck. PC is referring to the metaphorical usage of the term albatross, typically referring to a large seabird, and albatross is also an insult originating from a poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge called The Rime of the Ancient Mariner. In it, a sailor wrongfully shoots an albatross with a crossbow and is cursed to carry the weight of the carcass around his neck. Today, it is commonly used to refer to an annoying burden or hindrance that is difficult to get rid of. Harsh words, but not unfitting of the excessive demands of time and emotional reliance he constantly saddles PC with. PC storms back into the restaurant to get a drink as Bojack follows after her, desperate to get the last word in and try to clear his guilty conscience. He's approached by a waiter pleading for help in the now short-staffed kitchen. The B story of the episode revolves around the hapless waiter and a few stray customers becoming staff by default, trying to make a good impression on a visiting food critic. Bojack bullies the waiter into cooking for the patrons before confronting PC. He accuses her of actually enjoying saving Bojack, claiming it makes her feel better about herself by comparison. This comment harkens back to PC's assertions from season two, that she impulsively takes care of others when she doesn't know how to help herself. In this situation, Princess Carolyn vehemently disagrees, citing Bojack's repeated poor decision-making as the root cause of her forced interventions. Help me! I slept with a gaffer's wife, and now he's not lighting me properly! Princess Carolyn! I threw up on Elle Fanning in a bounce house! Bojack mocks PC's tone of voice, completely ignoring her valid criticisms. This type of interaction is often seen in classic codependent relationships like Princess Carolyn and Bojack's. It generally involves a giver and a taker. One person, in this case Princess Carolyn, acts as the caretaker or enabler of the taker, in this case Bojack, who takes advantage of the enabler. While commonly seen in relationships involving substance abuse, it also frequently is seen in narcissistic relationships, often fostered by a lack of boundaries from the codependent giver and a lack of consequences for the narcissistic taker. Common fight tactics used by narcissists involve using name calling, blame shifting, ridicule, and deflection. We see Bojack use most of these in his arguments during the episode. However, they are 
are much more acutely observed in the parents of both PC and Bojack. Developmentally, PC and Bojack have had very similar upbringings that would lead them both towards codependent relationships. PC's mother, Cutie Cutie Cupcake, was an alcoholic, often too drunk to work as the live-in maid for the wealthy Wallace family. Butterscotch and Beatrice Horseman ignored their son in favor of fighting over infidelity and money in addition to their alcoholic tendencies. Where PC and Bojack differ, however, is how they both dealt with the chaos. PC would cover for Cutie from a very young age, preventing her mother from being fired and her family from becoming destitute. This constant pressure also laid down the foundation of Princess Carolyn's workaholic tendencies. By the time she reached high school, PC had taken on so much responsibility that Cutie became dependent on her, even trying to guilt trip PC into not leaving to go to college. On the other hand, Bojack found that the only way he received conditional love from his parents was through performing, like by singing the lollipop song at dinner parties. He internalized this during his childhood along with his parents' problematic relationship with alcohol. He got more into stand-up comedy by telling jokes at a high school party after having a few drinks. Sadly, he does this at the expense of others and ends up hurting the feelings of a girl who was kind to him at that party. Eventually, Bojack learns to do whatever it takes to excuse his own behavior or avoid responsibility as long as he gets a positive response from an audience. Did you ever love me at all? Bojack proceeds to follow Princess Carolyn into the bathroom and says he struggled with this decision, even consulting Anna. PC snaps after hearing Bojack say he respects Anna's opinion, insinuating he respects her more than PC despite their history together. His oblivious comment shows how flippant he is with burning bridges out of his own petty self-interest. This launches into a knockdown drag out fight, scaring off the majority of the customers. Citing her lack of professionalism as a major issue, the pair resume their argument in the meat locker to cool down their already heated tempers. Bojack's professionalism comment is, of course, projection. He is self-aware enough to experience the guilt of how his decisions affect others, but he is not emotionally mature enough to actively stop himself from repeating the same patterns. Despite his obnoxious bravado, Bojack is a deeply insecure person and wants to be liked by others, even when he knows he doesn't deserve it. So PC's comment about him wanting a mommy he can sleep with is pretty much spot on. Bojack wants a female figure that represents unconditional love and understanding, who selflessly takes care of him out of a genuine concern for his well-being. He lacks the insight to realize he needs to be responsible for himself first to then be able to truly love somebody else. He constantly confuses sexual attraction with love, allowing himself to be overly reliant on others to the point of dependence. PC calls Bojack out on this by highlighting his constant attempts to sleep with most of his female colleagues, something we see repeatedly throughout the series all the way through season 5. PC focuses on Bojack's tendency to look for the negative as a self-pitying masochist by saying 10 nice comments and one mean comment about Bojack. She knows this will get under his skin as Bojack frequently plays the victim, using negative remarks about himself to affirm his own deeply ingrained self-hatred. We later see this firsthand in Stupid Piece of Shit, showing that his internal monologue is incredibly harsh and cruel, casting massive judgments on the decisions of others, but even more so on himself. As he repeatedly shoots down her compliments, she laughs in bewilderment. Despite their persistent conflicts, PC and Bojack still have many fond memories with each other, especially during emotionally fraught periods. This is an important aspect to remember with codependent relationships. Remembering the happiest times spent with each other tends to keep them bonded, even if circumstances can start to change for the worse. PC keeps chasing after those emotional highs, hoping Bojack's behavior will improve if she does what she can to help him, despite how infrequently this happens. While their relationship lacks the balance needed for any long-term relationship to thrive, it had not gotten to the point of Princess Carolyn wanting to completely sever ties with Bojack, despite how far he's tried her patience. Part of PC's inability to let Bojack go emotionally is that she feels a responsibility to damage control his self-destructive actions. This is most notable in Escape from LA, as Bojack, reeling from his breakup, abandons his movie secretariat. Despite PC urging him to return to set and prevent a lawsuit, he opts to spend months away in New Mexico. PC may lack strong boundaries with Bojack, but she's had no trouble distancing herself from others like Rutabaga, Vincent, Judah, or Ralph once they've crossed a line with her. I do. By the end of their cooldown period in the meat locker, Bojack and PC are interrupted by the waiter, and a fire that's broken out in the kitchen. It's very telling that PC is the first one to comfort the waiter, giving him a bag of frozen peas for his burnt face. Meanwhile, Bojack just lights a cigarette using the flames. Bojack is comfortable living in chaos, while PC is comfortable managing chaos. The donkey patron turned waitress enters the kitchen, stating all the other customers went home except for the food critic, who still wants her mushroom risotto. Only Princess Carolyn knows how to make it. She 
volunteers to help, but Bojack dismisses her and she reluctantly leaves. With Elefante in the rearview mirror, PC hears the song on the radio, pleading with her to break your pattern of needing to fix other people. While hilarious, the song appears to be a manifestation of her internal crisis, wanting to follow her better judgment and breaking her own toxic cycle. It's incredibly telling that even when fate itself is unmistakably saying, don't do it PC, she still ends up going back to the restaurant. Just another example of the ways PC constantly enables Bojack. She is present in his life as the supportive female figure that Bojack never had growing up. Despite being a very capable person, Princess Carolyn does exhibit quite a few codependent traits. She's overly responsible, exhibits caretaking behavior, prioritizes the needs of others above her own, appears to have low self-esteem in romantic relationships, and possesses a high tolerance for inappropriate behavior in others. As mentioned by Raphael Bob Waxberg in the Bojack art book, Princess Carolyn is constantly struggling with spinning plates. She struggles to achieve balance between her work life and her personal life, as one aspect tends to fall while the other is more resilient. This also explains her resentment towards Vanessa Gecko, who she perceives as having everything PC wants, but with substantially less effort. Being a mom helped my career? I really can have it all! Even the risotto feels like a very deliberate dish choice by the writers. While not especially complex, risotto is notorious for requiring a lot of attention to cook properly and ensure texture consistency. The perfect dish to showcase these major aspects of Princess Carolyn's personality. Bojack comments on when they first met, which he completely misremembers due to being blackout drunk, the actual first time they met. Even the very first instance of PC and Bojack meeting, PC went far out of her way to help take care of Bojack's mistakes, to such an extent that Bojack didn't even know about it. A dangerous precedent that purely encapsulates how the relationship would play out. Though she's talented at her job, PC openly admits that she doesn't know what she would do without it, even if it makes her miserable. This may also be a subtle reference to her relationship with Bojack itself. Though their dynamic seems unsustainable, she doesn't know what she would do without it. Bojack still compliments her, stating that no matter how bad things get, PC always lands on her feet, admiring her resiliency and adaptability. I do love you, by the way. I mean, as, as much as I'm capable of loving anyone, which is never enough. I'm sorry. PC smiles and proudly presents him with the finished risotto for the food critic. Is it possible that you letting me go is the happy ending? After dismissing the Yelp critic, Princess Carolyn finishes off her string of compliments. Bojack calls her a good friend before PC begs him, as a friend, to not leave her agency. At the end of a rope, she needs a favor like this from one of her oldest, closest relationships. Granted, it's a big ask to stick around a failing agency for six months, but she promises to never ask him for anything ever again. Bojack thinks for a beat and gives her his answer. What do you think? No. This episode ending is a shocking gut punch for both PC and the audience. Bojack flatly ends his representation with Princess Carolyn, effectively a death sentence for Vim. Without their biggest client on the roster, Princess Carolyn has to fire Diane, and Judah has to do some immediate restructuring to lessen other financial impacts. He also encourages PC to approach the change as an opportunity to restart her life, which she does by going on a date with Ralph Stilton. By the end of the season, Bojack's social circle slowly diminishes in a culmination of all of his poor decisions. Throughout the series, Bojack Bojack tends to force intense levels of responsibility onto others, most notably the important women in his life. At the end of season one, he fires Diane after she leaks a few chapters of One Trick Pony. Despite it being well received by the public and Princess Carolyn, Bojack insists on rewriting the book himself, claiming it's not a flattering enough depiction and will impact how he's perceived by the public. Upon failing to rewrite it himself, Bojack questions Diane at a ghostwriter panel, asking if she thinks he's salvageable as a person. He dumps all of the responsibility onto her to validate him in public, as he's incapable of viewing himself separately from the perceptions of others. In season two, he threatens to autoerotic asphyxiate himself in front of then-girlfriend Wanda Pierce, all because of his own self-perceived weakness after accidentally telling Wanda he loves her. In his mind, he's keeping score with her and believes that he would be weak for admitting he loves her first. Wanda happens to have the most solid boundaries out of any of his previous partners and breaks up with him once he shows no sign of growing out of his own toxic habits. Bojack even attempts to place this kind of imposition onto Anna Spanakopita for most of season three, until they discover his nomination for Secretariat was a mistake. She ghosts him despite his desperate pleas for comfort. Anna feels no emotional obligation to a sinking ship like Bojack, as she spells out to him during her lifeguard story in That's Too Much Man. Because there are some people you can't save. Because those people will thrash and struggle 
and try to take you down with them. Notably, after the events of Best Thing That Ever Happened, Princess Carolyn is missing from Bojack's kitchen in the opening credits. In That's Too Much Man, Bojack drunkenly crashes into the lawn of her apartment complex in the middle of the night, yelling that he's sorry in a ham-fisted attempt to make amends. Princess Carolyn just sighs and heads back inside with Ralph. He's enacting the same patterns as before, but this time, no one bothers to try and stop him. And they don't actually communicate again until roughly a year later during the episode Thoughts and Prayers. The phone call initially begins with what appears to be a sincere apology to PC before Bojack completely botches it, revealing ulterior motives. From here, their reconnection attempts are gradual but with increased boundaries from Princess Carolyn, and it lovingly dovetails back once PC attaches Bojack's name to be able to sell a script. She flubs and confesses to Bojack that she panicked and forged his signature, as he would be a big enough star to secure the funding for it. Surprisingly, he actually agrees with no hesitation, as a sign of gratitude for all she's done for him. I'll do it. What? You want me to do it, I'll do it. God knows you've done enough for me. They apologize to one another, becoming friends once again. Ultimately though, this episode really did foreshadow the end of the series. Though they would reconnect in season 4 and beyond, by the end of season 6, Bojack and Princess Carolyn go their separate ways once again. Bojack needed to seek accountability on his own without the constant aid of PC, always there to put out his fires and clean up his messes. Princess Carolyn needed to distance herself from Bojack and break her cycle of codependency in order to align every area of her personal and professional life. And in the series finale, though they do reconnect personally, Princess Carolyn pointedly decides that she will not work with Bojack again professionally, because though it was a few seasons before their final split, Bojack and Princess Carolyn breaking their toxic cycles within their relationship and cutting ties really was the best thing that ever happened. No.